pleasure for us to welcome in our next guest on the Smith Enterprise Hotline. If you watch ESPN, you certainly need no introduction to our next guest, Reese Davis. He's got him a brand new gig up in Bristol, Connecticut. You may have seen it, uh, 2.30 and 5.30. The host of College Football Live and, of course, College Game Day Final of Pleasure for us to welcome in Alabama's own Reese Davis. Reese, welcome in. How are you? I'm doing well, Harold. How are you guys? Brad, we are you? doing great. First of all, congratulations, Reese, on the new show. Uh, how's it going so far? Off to a good start, Harold. It's, uh, you know, it's really interactive. Um, the fans have had an opportunity to email questions. At some point, we hope to be able to add instant messaging to it. I don't know if we'll be able to add text messaging since the NCAA is now banned text messaging after today. But um, in fact, I'm, not, I'm going to have to get a ruling from Miles Brand to see if I can, you know, I like text message my wife. I don't know if that's allowed or not. But uh, anyway, it's going very well. Um, you know, there's an opportunity for fans to upload videos, and we're hoping that at some point that's going to develop. Uh, to be something a little bit more than yay team. I'd like for it yeah. to you know, be something a little more substantive, but mm -hmm. that's still been fun at times, uh, seeing, seeing what people can do to create their own videos and get them uploaded to it. Reese, you're a phenomenal story to yourself. Uh, the absolute poster child for hometown boy uh, done good for Muscle Shoals, and of course ESPN now, the giant in sports. But what does it say about college football? I mean, they could choose anything they want. You guys have that kind of clout and power and leverage. But to come down and to dedicate a block of valuable time to college football, what does that say about uh, how far the sport has come, and not only that, where it's going? Well, I, I think, you know, I think it's always been, you know, it's always been popular and there's always been a thirst for information, but I think the thing that has changed is uh, with all of the technology that's available now and, and so much traffic on Internet sites, particularly uh, with regard to recruiting, that it has uh, it is created more of a year-round atmosphere. I mean, the players are uh, on campus year-round. I had a player not in the SEC. Uh, tell me when I asked him uh, how voluntary workouts were going, he laughed. He said, "Voluntary?" voluntary? I said, okay. <laughs> I said, "By okay." I said, "By definition, voluntary." And uh, he laughed and he said, "He said, you know, he said there's really no choice. He said you're you're making a choice whether you want to play and whether you want to win. You know, and if you you know if guys leave, then there's less of an opportunity to do that. So." The year-round atmosphere for the players, I think, has also created the same type of interest for fans. They now have access to that type of information, and therefore it is, uh, you know, it's uh, being talked about uh, year-round more so than perhaps it was in the past. I don't know that I believe it's any more popular. I really mm -hmm. don't necessarily believe that. But I do believe that there is, uh, it's, uh, there's more than just um, off-season chatter about how, you know, my team's going to beat your team next year and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Now there's sub something uh, more substantive to, uh, to discuss and follow during the offseason. Reese, let me ask you about one of the big topics at SEC Media Days last week was moving the kickoff from the 35 to the 30. A lot of the SEC coaches really feel like this is going to open up the offenses. What are your sources on College Football Live saying about that rule change? Uh, they think it's going to be a big deal, too. I think what you saw last year with the, with the new clock rules, you saw a reduction in the number of plays, and therefore some of the offensive statistics mm -hmm. weren't what they had been in previous years. When you move the kickoff back and go back to the previous clock rules about when the clock starts and stops, I think you're going to see some guys putting up some big numbers. Yeah. I think you're going to see some explosive plays in the kicking game. Um, take, for instance, California. Cal... Uh, as used Sean Jackson, their standout wide receiver on punt returns. Now with uh, with this move, uh, the word from what I understand, Jeff Tepper is now seriously considering it, and will all likelihood use the Sean Jackson on kickoff returns also. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see. You're, I think you're going to see more big plays in the return game because uh, you know Herbin Meyer said he might have said it media days said the other day kickoff's going to come down at about the nine yard line yeah and and you know people are going to be running with it certainly that's that's going to help urban with all of that uh with all of that yep. speed he has 
recruited down there. Absolutely. Speaking of the uh, the SEC media days last week, uh, Tommy Tupperville takes the podium. About a third of the questions concern Nick Saban <laughs> in Alabama. Les Miles took the podium, head coach at LSU. About a third or even more questions concern Nick Saban and uh, Alabama. In Reese, from your national perspective, what impact do you think that Nick is having on the league as far as the national perception and uh, the, the big part of that is one of the questions that Les never asked, but I'll ask you, if they had a boxing match between Saban and Miles, <laughs> who you putting Mama's money down on? You know what? I, I'm, I'm not even going to go there because I, I think <laughs> both those guys are, uh, you know, are good coaches and tough coaches. Certainly, you know, Nick's return to the SEC has made it tougher on Les simply because he has to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this. I think that in some respects it's helped Les because – for the last couple of years, even though Les Miles is 22 and 4 mm -hmm. down there, there's been an undercurrent of, well, if Nick Saban were the coach, we'd have yeah. a couple of yeah. championships yeah. and maybe a national championship. Okay, now they don't like Nick Saban anymore at LSU, <laughs> and now they can galvanize behind Les. Now that does up the ante. He's got to, he's got to continue to win at a very high rate. Um, but I do think that it will help him in that regard, in the comparison regard. Um, you know, I think as far as the impact that Saban has had on the league, it, it, just, um, it just means that Alabama for, uh, you know, in the near future is going to be uh, another national power in that conference. Now, traditionally, I know it always has been, but that hasn't been the case, you know, mm -hmm. over the last, right. I don't know, what, you know, 10, 15 years, basically, um, for the most part, with some exceptions. There have been, you know, good seasons in there and an SEC championship season in there. But I think what um, I think what this does is this makes Alabama a perennial power in the league. You know, once Saban uh, fully has his mark put on the program, you know, over the next uh, next couple of years, does that mean they're going to win the league every year? No. Does that mean they're going to beat Auburn every year? No. Not going to beat Tennessee every year. That's not the way it works. But they are going to be a contender every year, much in the same uh, way that you now think of Florida, LSU, and and. Uh, despite the last couple of years recently, mm -hmm. the way you've thought of Tennessee and the way you think of Auburn right now. Reese, a couple of minutes left with you. We asked you last August on the radio side who you thought would win the national championship in your surprise teams. Let me ask you this time, who's in New Orleans the second week in January, and who is the Reese Davis surprise teams of 2007? Uh, okay, I'm sorry, give that to me again. Who, who do I think is going to play in the national championship yes. game? Yeah. Yes. And surprise uh, well, I, I think you know, I, I think it's almost foolish to to pick against USC. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're just loaded at every position. Uh, certainly LSU is right there behind them. If I had to pick, though, right now, who I think will probably be in the national championship game, reserving the right to change my mind a little <laughs> bit, I'll, I'd probably go USC at Texas. Mm -hmm. wow. um, I think um, as far as, as a surprise team, um, you know, I think I think A and M could be pretty good in the Big Twelve. I think they could surprise some people, and and I think um, you know I think probably that uh, if you're going to go off the Big Six radar, I think TCU is awfully yeah. good, and I think wow. Texas is going to have its hands full when they when they play TCU. Reese, as always, we can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule. Good luck to you with your new gig up at uh, the ESPN, buddy. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you so there much, you have Reese. It. Uh, Reese Davis, the host of College Football Live and College Game Day Final. In my opinion, Reese is good enough to be at Network. <laughs>